These are the toxins you need to know for the AP exam. The first toxin is lead and it's found in the environment in old paint, old gasoline, old pipes, in current batteries and in e-waste. So any sort of electronics that you throw away has lead. So it used to be the pipes in our homes had lead, but in Santa Clarita, we don't have very many old pipes. So most of our city, including your neighborhoods, you're going to have either aluminum or copper pipes. You're not gonna have lead pipes in the majority of the city, except for the really old parts, maybe in Newhall. And in Saugus, there's a couple of really old streets that are older than the 50s. There you might have lead, but really the rest of our neighborhoods are not going to have lead pipes. Paint. Lead in paint was banned in the 1970s. And so your home may have lead paint if it was built before 1970s, um, early 70s. Um, but you can also get it tested at Home Depot or Lowe's. You can get a lead testing kit and check it um, and see if the lead is in the paint chips. Now, if it's in the paint, it's not going to be any problem at all as long as it's not chipping off or you don't sand it. Otherwise, the lead is not going to, if it's just on the wall and it's just sitting there and not being chipped off, then it's fine. It's, there's no exposure from lead. We used to put lead in our gasoline um, and then it was phased out starting in the 1970s because we learned that it went airborne and breathing in that lead as air pollutant is not healthy. In our current batteries, we have lead, which is why you cannot throw regular batteries or any batteries actually in the regular trash. You need to take them to, uh, to get them specially recycled because they are hazardous waste. And um, actually our public libraries and city hall have a battery receptacle. You can put them in there. Electronics. So if your cell phone breaks or your tablets break or even things like uh, VCRs or DVDs or whatever, um, you can't throw those things in the regular trash because they have lead in the e-waste. We'll talk about this more in chapter 22. The problem with lead is that it's a neurotoxin and it causes brain damage and kidney damage. And I can't read that, but it's kidney damage. This is supposed to be kind of a dot right here, but it didn't transfer over to my slide when it was loaded onto Google Docs. So the kind of things in the news that you need to know about, um, Flint, Michigan had lead in its drinking water from 2014 to 2017, it created a big news story and kind of a scandal because the um, water officials knew about it and they didn't tell anybody, which was just horrible. Another way that, um, and oh, and this is because they had old lead pipes. Um, babies and toddlers can ingest paint chips in old houses and from older toys, um, even not just older toys, but there was a thing about 12 years ago where they found out that toys made in China had lead paint. Even though it was illegal in the United States, they still did it and then imported those toys into the United States. Um, why did they do it? Well, because it made the paint shinier and nicer. And so they, they, it, the products looked better and you could get more money from them if they look better, but it ended up having paint, uh, lead and then kids could chew on those toys, um, especially wooden toys and um, get that paint, that lead in their mouths. It does bioaccumulate in the body and you can read about bioaccumulation um, in your textbook. It does get stored in the fat cells and that's what bioaccumulation does. Next we have mercury. And so these little boxes here should be arrows. Okay, so that should be an arrow. So coal burns, which makes the mercury airborne and I forgot an E. So airborne has an E, just so you know, at the end. So then rain brings that airborne mercury to rivers. Rivers load and flow to the ocean. In the ocean, you have it bioaccumulating in the fat tissues of organisms and then becoming higher and higher concentration up the food chain. That's called biomagnification. And then it gets into your top predatory fishes like tuna and swordfish which humans eat. 
And so this little picture here shows the whole food chain of what happens. In the water, it becomes methyl mercury, which is actually highly toxic. So it gets in the water into the krill, which get eaten by salmon, which get eaten by trout, and then even bigger animals. But we also eat these critters too, which have mercury in it. The same health, pack, health, health impacts is lead. It's a neurotoxin. It causes um, brain damage. It causes kidney damage. Some important info. In Minimata Bay, Japan, Thousands died, and this should say when mercury was dumped into the bay. And they, this was a company who mercury was their waste product, and they dumped it into the bay. And so people would go out there and fish and eat the fish. And so thousands in Japan died from mercury poisoning from this. It does bioaccumulate in your fat cells. In the water, you need to know that bacteria transform into methylmercury. So that's an important word. You might star that, which is toxic. And so one of the things that you can do is you can go to um, tuna calculator online. Just type in tuna calculator for mercury, and it'll tell you how much by your weight um, you can um, ingest of tuna to be safe. The next toxin you need to know is asbestos. So asbestos used to be used as insulation in mainly older buildings and homes. It was banned because we know it causes a lot of health problems. It was banned, uh, I don't quite remember, but in like the 1970s or so. Now, older buildings still can have asbestos in it, but as long as it's sealed in the walls or the ceilings, then it doesn't cause any problems. It's when it's disturbed with construction or um, in the 94 earthquake, a lot of that asbestos was disturbed, that um, it has, it causes trouble. And so if there's an older building that is gonna go undergo renovations or it has issues and an earthquake happens, or other sorts of things, then it has to go through asbestos abatement. And so specialized teams will come in with hazmat suits so they don't breathe any in um, and they will get rid of the asbestos. It's very costly to do so. So you need to know that um, this particular mesothelioma is uh, a specific kind of lung cancer caused by asbestos. So make sure you know that. And then asbestosis causes scarring of the lungs. And so these are two specific problems caused from asbestos. The next toxin is DDT. And we talk a lot about DDT in our course. And currently it's found um, in the bloodstream of some of our top predatory birds like bald eagles, peregrine falcons, brown pelicans. And what it does is it makes their shells weak. And so the birds sit on the, the eggs to keep them warm so they'll hatch and the weight of their bodies cracks the eggs when that's normally not supposed to happen. But DDT weakens the shell structure of the eggs. And it's in the top predatory birds because of bioaccumulation and biomagnification. It is still used illegally and on our imported foods. So while we ban it in the United States, um, some other countries it's still legal. Now, if you're gonna import food to the US, you cannot use DDT on it, but that doesn't mean that people don't. Only about 1% of our food is actually inspected as it comes into the United States. So in the grocery store, our produce section is full of fruits and vegetables from other countries, especially in the winter. And so um, sometimes other countries will use the uh, illegal DDT because it's really good at killing bugs. Um, <clears throat> it was one of the dirty dozen that was banned in the Stockholm Convention. So it is banned um, when it degrades, and you should write this down, but when it degrades, it degrades into DDE which is just as toxic. So um, it's gonna take a long time for it to completely, maybe thousands of years to get out of our environment. 
The next toxin is PCB. It is also banned. Um, so it's banned via the Stockholm syndrome. It's one of the dirty dozen. It used to be used as an industrial chemical. It persists a long time, so we call it a POP, persistent organic pollutant. It is found a lot in the Arctic Circle. In your book, we talk about global distillation, where wind and <clears throat> ocean water currents tend to concentrate toxins up in the Arctic Circle. So these are the, the Inuit. A lot of times people will, the older name is Eskimo, but the um, tribal name is called Inuit. So those people tend to have a lot of PCB and DDTs concentrated in their blood because of the food they eat up there. They eat a lot of um, uh, walrus and seal and those kinds of foods because that's what they hunt up there to eat. That's their traditional foods. And those toxins bioaccumulate in those animals. And it can also get into the breast milk of, um, of mothers. So it is still around and it still causes a problem. The next toxin is radon. And so radon is found naturally in the bedrock um, and soil. There are little radiant uranium deposits around the country. We don't have very many in Santa Clarita or if any, we don't have radon problems in Santa Clarita, but in other states they do. Um, so uranium occurs here and there, even in small amounts, and it decays into radon. And then radon can seep into your house, mainly through the basements and cracks in the foundation. So another reason why we don't have radon issues in Santa Clarita is because we don't build basements due to earthquakes. And so we're not going to have that seepage into basements because we don't have them. Um, and then we don't just we don't really have radon issues here anyway, even through cracks in the foundation. But in other states, you have to have your home inspected for radon. When you buy or sell a house, they come in and do a radon inspection. That happened when I live in Raleigh, North Carolina for a few years. Um, radon causes lung cancer, you need to know that. And it can also dissolve into groundwater. And so if you have an aquifer down here I'm drawing an aquifer on this picture. If you have an aquifer, it can dissolve into the groundwater. And so that's another source of radon as well. The next toxic uh, toxin is atrazine. And so this one is here because it's an example of an endocrine disruptor. And so the AP test will want you to understand endocrine disruptors. It's also a problem um, with gender imbalances. And so um, the AP test requires you to understand that endocrine disruptors can cause gender imbalances in certain um, species, um, especially frogs and alligators are the ones that have been studied. And so in your book, um, it, there's a little picture of both Tyrone Hayes, who studied frogs, and Louis Gillette, who studied alligators. Not allegation. It is alligators. And so um, these are kind of the classic case studies of um, endocrine disruptors in frogs and alligators. And it's obviously going to be in other species too. They just, those are the two that they've studied a lot. So atrazine is an herbicide. It is legal. <clears throat> the makers of atrazine say there's 100% no problem whatsoever but some of the research shows that that's not true. Um, it causes amphibians to become sexually hermaphrodites, so both male and female parts, um, and then sexually impaired as well, um, and then gender imbalances. So sometimes these um, endocrine disruptors will mimic hormones that cause too many males or too many females to be developed um, in these reptiles. Atrazine is very, very common. It is still used legally and used a lot. And the last one for you to know is bisphenol A. We have this one down here as a, another example of an endocrine disruptor. 
this one is everywhere. You come in contact with this every day. Um, there are <clears throat> people pushing for laws. California law, as of a few years ago, bans BPA in baby products. If you go to the grocery store and you buy anything that is a plastic container, like a Ziploc plastic container for storing food or a water bottle, um, if you have a plastic water bottle, if you're on the bottom, a lot of them now say BPA free. So even though it's not illegal, except in children's products, in adult products, there's a lot of people like me who will not buy plastics that have BPA in it. So manufacturers are responding by not choosing that type of plastic. It's also in the lining of food cans. So people, the researchers, the scientists that study BPA, what they recommend is that for most canned foods, it's okay. The BPA is not going to leach into the food, but with tomato-based cans. So um, spaghetti sauce is in a can, not a jar. Um, or um, like chili, you see a picture here of chili, anything that has tomatoes. Now tomatoes are acidic and it causes the BPA to leach into the food. So whenever I go to the store and I buy cans of tomatoes because I'm gonna make spaghetti sauce um, from scratch um, or anything that's a tomato based, I look for on the label, it's organic because organic usually does not have BPA in their linings because their customers don't want it when they buy organic. Um, or the <clears throat> it will say BPA free or even if it's imported from Europe, because Europe doesn't have BPA. So when I buy canned tomatoes for my tomato sauce, I often buy the cans from Italy. Now I know that's not ecologically great because it's shipped here from Italy, and so you have those fossil fuels that are burned, but I know it doesn't have BPA in its lining. Receipt tape is another one that's that kind of shiny, smooth receipt tape that they print from heat actually at the end of your transaction. So that has BPA in it. Now, of course, don't eat it and then you'll be fine. And that's the end of your toxin charts.